Hello there. What is going on, everyone? I just ate some bacon. Turn around and see a new tank preview. What a glorious day this is going to be. All right, guys, we're going to be talking about the AAT Trade Federation Battle Tank, the latest in the wave of new big nasty tanks for Star Wars Legion, especially for the Clone Wars factions that don't really have any heavies yet. So really cool that the Separatists are getting this iconic, beautiful, gorgeous tank. We're going to be talking about this and we learned a few new things in this preview today. So we're going to break it all down for you. Do want to remind you guys also about the giveaway. There's still time left to enter to win the $25 Amazon gift card. You just have to be a subscriber. Leave a comment on this or one of my videos letting me know what your favorite tank is or what your favorite tank what your favorite heavy is in the game of star wars legion uh but yes this thing looks just awesome uh i i'm i'm i cannot wait to start putting this mini together um if you guys don't like putting minis together this might not be the one for you i actually asked them in one of the live streams about uh how you know how long was it going to take and i think they said that these things took them about a day to put together now that's probably very varying dependently on your skill on putting them together or versus how many you're putting together uh, a lot of times like your first time assembling something with new instructions can be a little bit daunting especially something like this which looks like it's going to be pretty big uh, this will be on a sprue hard plastic it's going to take some time i would advise you to you know get comfortable clear your plans for the day put on a couple of Crabock YouTube videos or maybe your favorite podcast and have that going on in the background and have something to listen to and start start assembling. Take your time. I expect it to be daunting. But we've got some new stuff to talk about uh, because we've got some new previews. Um, let's talk about the Federation Battle Tank itself. This thing is 170 points. Also uh, with the largest base tied, you know, with the Republic's. Uh, but uh, yeah, the largest base size in the game. Uh, you've got notches on the sides. These things can do the strafe move with one, uh, one pit or a one speed. It's just it's it's really really nice. Um, 170 points. You've got driver. You've got two of the shells, and you've got uh, the com upgrade. This thing has arsenal two. Don't have to put any shells on it because it's already got two guns built into it. However, some of the shells look really cool, um, and we got a preview of some of those. But uh, it's got AI attack, so it's going to be subject under that same AI rule. So you're going to want to give this thing a, a an order, especially if you've got weapons that are fixed in a certain direction. And you're like, no, but I wanted to fire, uh, you know, I wanted to move first so I could, you know, point my weapons in this direction or that direction. So you don't want to be stuck having to use suboptimal weapons because you don't have an order. Uh, so that's going to be a very important to get these guys an order, which maybe you'll be putting HQ uplink on something like this. Maybe. All right, so obviously it does have armor, as most tanks would have, uh, which is great. It's got arsenal too. Again, you can fire. Tw you can use, basically use two different weapons when you fire per mini, which it's only a mini of one. I, I wonder, that ar arsenal is one of those keywords that makes me wonder, are they ever going to put arsenal on a multi-mini unit? That would be really interesting because the combinations would quickly get out of control at that point especially if that unit has access to like a heavy weapons with a its own weapon and then grenade slots for example you know that could be cr kind of tricky okay um we've got barrage which is a new keyword for this one if you do not use arsenal during your activation you can perform up to two attack actions there's, there's a couple of things i want to talk about with this first off it's really nice for its, especially for any kind of high velocity weapon like this one right over here. Um, high velocity is really cool because they can't spend dodge tokens. Dodge tokens are very prominent right now, uh, especially with taunt on lists. Rebels like to use dodge tokens, but dodge tokens aren't that great. The other thing that's going to be really important with dodge tokens is the new Republic tank, which has this whole outmaneuver ability, which is dodges can cancel crits, and that that will probably be something that shows up again. I would guess that's going to be a very popular keyword, and um, also it, it veers is um, uh, two pip that lets uh, vehicles count, uh, crits counter can, uh, cancel uh, dodges can cancel crits on vehicles. So I just think um, you know I think high velocity is going to be a really nice option to have available. So I, I'm digging this keyword over here. Very cool. Um, and so that basically means if that's all you have in your attack pool, if you know if high velocity is all you have in your attack pool, then you then the opponent can't use dodge uh, tokens. So 
we only units we've seen before this uh, were that had that were were snipers, you know, and so it's uh, it's nice to see it on different things, and it's kind of cool to see like well made plans from early on, like you know, paying off now, or like we're seeing other keywords put to use in different ways. Uh, so if you wanted to do high velocity here and then high velocity there, you could do two different attack actions, which is going to be nice. Now keep in mind if you want to do that. It's going to count as your two actions. So it's not like your one attack, you're going to be able to like move and then attack twice. It's going to, you only get two actions. So if you do attack twice, and maybe if you get that AI attack, maybe that's something you do. You're like, crap, I got AI attack. Well, I guess I'll just attack and, uh, you know, I might as well just attack again. You know, that might be an option that you go with. Um, you've got hover ground like these, like the other tank. These are both hover ground vehicles. It does count as a repulsor vehicle because it says that, but most other units are going to consider it to be a ground vehicle, and that's going to deal with like trying to move through it or it providing heavy cover uh, to people behind it and things like that. I expect there to be a lot of specific interactions addressed in the FAQ on to ex how exactly that works. Uh, there were some questions about the movement during the live play where like, well, I, you don't really get to ignore uh, the terrain height one like repulsor vehicles often do, but that's not because they're repulsor vehicles. That's usually because those type of vehicles tend to have speeder, which this absolutely does not. So you not, don't have to worry about doing any compulsory moves with this thing. Uh, and it does have the weak point two for rear. Now, this one is interesting because we've seen weak point one before. This is a weak point two, which means anybody attacking us from the rear is going to get impact two. They're going to be able to turn two of their hits to crits, which is going to bypass the armor keyword. Uh, but it's interesting that this is only on the rear, which means its sides are armored. A lot of tanks tend to have weak point sides and rear. This one is just weak point rear, so you're going to have much less... Uh, risk of actually getting outflanked. And considering you're probably not going to be able to move all that much, you're probably going to just deploy and kind of just stay there or move around very little is my guess. Uh, I think if in the perfect world, you probably move very little. Um, so that's kind of nice. I'd be surprising. I think the only people that are going to be able to really flank you are going to be really fast units like speeder bikes or maybe tauntauns, things like that, might be able to get around behind. Uh, now, as far as weapons, we've got uh, our first weapon, the uh, lateral anti-personnel lasers, one to two. Three dice, fixed front. Uh, and then you've got your MX-8 artillery laser cannons. Two to four, four dice. Critical two, and high velocity and impact one. We were talking about high velocity already. Now, what's nice about this is for the one unit, it actually has seven dice it can throw uh, in one attack if you use arsenal two. Or eight dice if you use barrage. But these are going to be a little bit... Um, a little bit tricky to use because if you do throw eight dice for one unit without any upgrades, that's a pretty high amount of dice. However, you've got this one issue that, like, that means you're not doing any other actions. So there's a, it's like, there's some opportunity cost which goes into like throwing that many dice natively. You have no surge of any type, uh, no attack or defensive surge. Uh, but of course, you have a critical two on the MX8. So you kind of have a little bit of offensive surge, but no defensive surge. But red defense dice, you're you're real tough. Nine health, six resiliency, and only speed one. Of course, you're with that big of a base. Even moving forward, speed one is going to be like a normal unit doing a speed. Three almost. I don't know. I'll have to see when we actually get that base on the table because it's like a 150 millimeter base. It's huge. Um, we got to look at a couple of the uh, upgrades today. We got the high energy shells, and this is not going to be faction specific or even vehicle specific. So anything that can take the shells is going to be able to take this uh, this ordinance here. So uh, high energy shells is going to be range two to four. It's an exhaustible. It's going to have two red and a white. And critical one again. Critical is just like everywhere now. Like that's why another reason why I think we're going to be seeing more of the uh, you know improving the usefulness of dodge tokens uh, because we're also getting another weapon that's got high velocity. Uh, this one has cycle as its keyword. And cycle, we've talked about this before. If you don't use it, you get to automatically ready it. So it's an exhaustible weapon. I like this one a lot, actually. Uh, I like it because if you combine this with your MX-8, you're going to have critical three, which is really nice because you're going to be rolling one, two, three, four, five, six red and a white, still getting seven dice uh, for potentially one attack if you are using arsenal. Uh, so you can still move, or, may, or if you have an order, you can aim and shoot. Right? You're going to have critical three, so you're, you know, you got the same surge chance on everything, but it really stinks to roll red dice and have critical results that you can't convert. Darth Vader commander players know what I'm talking about here. So uh, that's awesome. And you have 
high velocity on both of them as well. So you should, uh, the opponents won't be able to spend dodges. This could be a really cool, and it's cheap, it's only eight points. Gives you some good options too, because here's the thing. Anybody at range three, you're not gonna be able to do Arsenal two, fire both weapons on, right? Any Anybody at range four, you're not gonna be able to do it. Um, the only way you can fire both of the native weapons and try to you know do Arsenal without any upgrades would be as if your all your targets were at range two. And this kind of gives you a lot more flexibility for only eight points. I mean, you're already spending 170, right? You don't want to have to spend like another 30 points on just another gun. So this one is very versatile. I think you'll be able to use it a lot. You probably won't be able to use it every turn, but you'll be able to use it a pretty good amount. And so maybe the turns where you're letting this cycle, you're doing barrage and firing twice with the MX-8. I feel like that's kind of my jam on how I might want to run something like this. One turn, poof, seven, all on one. Now I'll move. Next turn, all right. Two attack actions not moving, you know, like so moving really, really slow while we reload. Like I, that's kind of the vibe I get from this. And that sounds cool. Let me know if you agree. Um, we get another shell here called the Bunker Buster shells. Uh, this one is similar in synergy with the shorter range weapon. So if you want to be a little more aggressive, moving in closer to the objective, this is going to give you more dice at closer range. Uh, this is a range one to two. It's going to be a black and three white. Again, a lot more. This one will be harder to use because you don't have that offensive surge, right? If I'm going to go back, look, you've got fixed front on your lateral anti-personnel lasers, three black, but no critical on that. So no offensive surge here at all, uh, which is is rough. Uh, it's, it makes me wish I could put Imperial Hammers pilot on this thing. <laughs> wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that be awesome? I'd love to see some generic pilots that can work across anything. Wouldn't that be cool? I don't know. It might be a little broken. It might be hard to balance something like that because you do want factions to have their faction identity, right? But I feel like this is much worse of a shell than the last one because of its close range. I don't think people are going to get that close to you. And, um, and and it costs more. I always feel like that's weird sometimes. So, the, like So many times, like my most favorite weapon happens to be the cheapest one. Like Z6s are always cheaper than like the other versions for the troopers. And I I love the Z6 by far the best of any other heavy weapon. So I'm like, why does that always happen? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Bunker Buster shells, you get four dice. Uh, a lot of them are white. And you got no offensive surge. So you're going to miss with all of them. Um, it's got cycle, which and it's an exhaustible. I'm like, why do I need to exhaust a weapon that I'm going to miss with? I don't like it. Uh, it's fixed front again, so it's even more restrictive because you can only shoot front, front ways with it, which is like, golly, guys. But here's its cool keyword, scatter. After you perform an attack against a small base trooper, you may place each defending non-leader mini in cohesion. So basically, this one's really cool Like for those people that want to take, you know, like, oh, I've got some of the guys, but I'm all behind heavy cover. Well, all right, boom, I'll pull them all out of heavy cover. Now they're out in the open. This works well with someone like Dooku, who wants to be able to move in and engage in melee. You pull them out, max cohesion closer to Dooku. Now he gets to move in and cut the rest of them down, start a melee that way. Uh, it works really, really well for things like that. Or force push, right? Like, oh, they're just in range of force push now, and now I can pull them closer to me, or things like that. There's a lot of really cool capabilities when you look at scatter and combine that with a Jedi. I mean, Dooku already has that also, but now maybe he doesn't have to be the one doing it because that was always kind of one of those things like Dooku could make somebody scatter. Oh, okay, that's great. But that, that, there goes my attack, you know. So I kind of like the synergy this has with the faction that helps make up for the fact that I think the weapon as a whole is not good. Like in, um, what do we, in a microcosm, this is not that great of a weapon in my eyes. But I could be wrong. You know, it's my first time looking at it, right? So, like, maybe I'm just totally wrong. Uh, more hot takes with more times to kind of to build ideas with this might yield some new light. But my first impression, I like the other one way better. I really like the high energy shells a lot better because I expect to have the tank much farther away from the opponents. And a range one to two weapon that costs more, 50% more on an already expensive unit, I just I don't see that being something that I do very often. However, the other option is that you run both shells. You run the, because you've got two shell slots. So you could run bunker busters and the high energy shells. And what you could do is while one exhausts then and is on cycle, the other one now kicks up. So you can, as long as you're giving orders every turn, you could move. Like I could shoot, boom, 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 and then move up closer. Next turn, I don't even need to worry about uh, an order. I shoot first, boom, 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 and then I move back. And then this one is cycled. So like there's that as another option. 
I don't know if I'm going to do that, but I can see that like you just going back and forth, like the piston strategy, right? The internal combustion engine, you know, um, what compression, power, exhaust, in intake, compression, power, exhaust. You could do the internal combustion engine strategy. I just coined that term. It's the internal combustion engine strategy for the AAT. That's what this is telling me if you run both of them. I don't know. I don't know. I come up with really dumb things sometimes, like the whole radical thing. You know, people said, don't ever do that again. And I guess I just did it. So I failed you all. But this is what happens when I have bacon right before making a video. Okay. Uh, T Series Tactical Droid Pilot. This here's something else we've got. We got the AAT Trade Federation Battle Tank only. So he could, again, he can only be on this one. A lot, most pilots seem like they're just restricted to one vehicle. It's kind of unfortunate. Some aren't. You know, they like Imperial Hammers, is not. Uh, but. Yeah, you're going to lose AI attack. So this is good, you know, if you want to aim and shoot, which is always nice. Uh, okay. And you gain field commander. So this one is real nice. So you can be nominated as the commander. This is good if you're running single commander and you're running like maybe Grievous and there he's out there in the middle or Dooku and he's really far away from everybody else and he's off like infiltrating. If you, I like stuff like this if you plan on running your commander a little bit more like an operative. And I feel like Grievous and Dooku both can be kind of made to run that way um but this is for your your neutral command cards your 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 standing orders your 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 assault your push your uh you know those things um those can go off of here now you, there are also neutral command cards for the other factions that came with those uh those specialists uh once those eventually come out because they did say a long time ago they were going to they were going to make those for the, new, uh, for the new factions as well. So when those come out, we'll have even more options. So this is a card that'll probably get even better once you have more neutral command card options because once you get a generic commander, this gives you more options for that generic commander, which is kind of cool. Now, keep in mind, a vehicle will never be able to be nominated as a commander if your commander dies. So you always have to nominate someone else. However, this one could still be, so you'd never be, they'd never be able to use your courage value because you don't have a courage value, right? But you could still issue orders from something like this, which is, makes me ask the question, could you even play a neutral command card if you have no commander? I think there'll have to be a rules reference update to say, like, let's say all all commanders are dead because there was this there was this a, a scenario that was asked about is what happens if I have got like our vehicle heavy built, all of my troopers die. All my troopers die. I have no eligible trooper left to be nominated as a replacement commander. And the answer, I think according to Luke Eddy or Alex Davey, one of the two, is that, well, in that case, you just won't have a commander. Uh, you, and you won't be able to play command cards. So, like, it makes me think, well, and I don't have, I'm not pulling up the rules right now. This is kind of, just kind of in the middle of the video. Thinking about this is, would you even be able, if that were the case and you had this guy out there, would you even be able to play, you know, a standing orders card? Would you even be able to issue orders? I think you would. I think that's the... I think that's kind of the spirit of Field Commander. Uh, you wouldn't be able to share courage values or anything, but I think you could at least play a neutral card off of this guy. But I await uh, some kind of clarification. I have to look up the rules and see if you're allowed to play a card, it just gets wasted, or if you just are not allowed to play a card at all, whatever the rules currently are, and to see if they get amended based on Field Commander. Maybe that was a little too much talk for just one question. That's a little bit of a corner case. All right. We got the OOM series droid pilot. Uh, here's another pirate. Pi a pirate. Not a pirate. He's not a pirate. Roger. The Jolly Roger. I'm, I'm stupid. Okay. You can coordinate droid troopers. So this one is kind of cool. So you can kind of... Very similar to how the clone pilot would let you kind of do the clones ability on you know your nearby clones. The droid pilot kind of lets you do the droid coordinate uh, nearby. So this way you can you can issue your order to this guy. I think this is the better of the two. I think this is definitely the better of the two, at least the, the easier one to start getting used to uh, from, you know, for your typical lists that are going to be, you know, uh, one commander, one heavy tank, and then a battle line of, uh, of droids. So you, you do, even with standing orders, you just issue your order to the tank, and then he follows up and just, chains it all the way down to all the B1 droids. And and that and that, that allows you to even put a, a B2 super battle droid at the end of the chain. Uh, and then you'll have all your orders out and then your commander is the only one in the pile. So you have full activation control, even with just standing orders. I think this is a great one to go with. Um, I think I like this one quite a bit. And then, of course, we've got Lock Durd. Uh, they talked about this one in the last live stream, but we uh, and Luke Eddy actually leaked some of these in uh, Discord. So a lot, some of you have already seen this one uh, up close. 
This one's awesome. Uh, you lose AI attack even while this card is exhausted, and then you get the free action until the end of your action. Each of your weapons gains suppressive. And this is awesome because you're going to be able to deal out two additional suppression uh, if you split them up. If you split fire with, or if you go with barrage. Uh, and that's that's just amazing here. That's just awesome. So you're going to... Now, it doesn't look like there's going to be a beam weapon option for this tank, which is good because if you had suppressive and a beam weapon, then you'd be like, oh, I'm going to chain to three more guys for just for this one attack. Oh, and then I can barrage or I, and, and do that whole thing again. So you'd be dealing out like six ridiculous amount. You're still going to deal out a lot of suppression this way, probably four, uh, but that's... That's pretty awesome. Uh, I like him. And then the fact that you lose AI attack also. He's doing two different things, which is cool. And by the way, for these of you who don't know, Lock Durd was from, I think, Season 1 of The Clone Wars. He had that super weapon that was vaporizing the fields, killing all organic life. And then, uh, you know, Rex got hurt down on this planet. And the little guys were like, no, we can't defend our village. We are peaceful. And, and he was voiced by George Takei, as a matter of fact. So um, pretty, pretty fun stuff. I think he's a great pilot. Um, I, th I probably still prefer the OOM series droid pilot, you know, maybe for the first couple of games while you're getting used to it, try it out, uh, you know, and, and he should make fielding the tank very, very easy because you have full activation control, but I think when you get more advanced, when you get more comfortable with the tank, Lock Dirt is going to be very, very, very fun. Uh, ranking at the bottom is, is this one. I don't really like the uh, field commander ability, although you do lose AI attack permanently this way, so it's like, that's kind of cool too, but I like this one probably the best. All right, guys, that is everything we got today in the AAT Trade Federation Battle Tank Preview. I know I talked about it for a long time, so thank you. if you stuck with me to this point, thanks for hanging out. Uh, by the way, there's still time left to enter and win that giveaway. Just be a subscriber, leave a comment. I am also later this week, I have some, I'll be announcing the winner of the latest Patreon giveaway, starting the next Patreon giveaway. So that is also going on with some more promos. We've got the uh, Legion Core set going up on Patreon uh, by the end of the month. So be on the lookout for that as well. I've also got some more Armada promos going up on Patreon. I think I'm going to probably do some more promos after this current giveaway. I think I'll probably do a promo giveaway at the same time uh, on the regular channel that I do for the, the gift card giveaway. So I'm going to I'm gonna double up the giveaways a little bit more as we go into March. Uh, I think I think March will be a, a, a heavier giveaway month. I mean, I'm already, I've already done one in February or at the end of January. February. So, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of picking it up a little bit, you know. Why not? It's fun. It's fun. All right, guys. Well, that's all I've got. I want to thank you all so much for hanging out with me. And I also want to thank my patrons. You guys are amazing and definitely help make this possible. Uh, we're going to Gen Con this year. We're going to have a good time. We just booked all of that, locked it in, and hopefully I'll see you there. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.